Hello and welcome to Engineering Made Easy. My name is Brian and today we're going to go through kind of a sample MATLAB code of how to use the forward order method to approximate solutions to simple first order um, ordinary differential equations. So if you haven't watched the video on um, the forward order method yet, it'd be a good idea to check that out and kind of give you some background on what we're about to do um, and kind of give you the derivation of all the formulas that we're going to use. Just to start, one of the things that I like to put at the top of all of my MATLAB codes, kind of just good practice here, um, is I put it here, all the statement, and close all, and a CLC. Now what this does is this clears your workspace, your command window, and it closes any figures that you might have open when you run your code. So, for example, if you had some variables saved in your workspace, um, and then you were to use those variables, Later in your code, this ensures that the values are coming from within your code and not from something you've run previously. So, for example, I've got these four variables in my workspace right now from um, prior when I was running the code. Um, and if I were to run this, um, those variables are all, all going to get cleared out. So it prevents any errors from like artifacts or something sticking around. Okay, so now we're going to use the forward Euler method. Um, we're going to be modeling the following ordinary differential equation, y prime equals 4y, um, from a time of 0 to 3 seconds. We're going to use an initial value of y0 equals 1, and then we're going to compare our numerical solutions to the exact solution of y equals um, x exponential 4. We're going to test different dt values to determine the, the effect on how accurate our numerical solution is. Um, we'll go from there. So first we're going to initialize our time discretization. We're going to start from d naught of zero. We're going to go to a final time of three seconds with a time step of 0.1 seconds. And we'll play with that in a little bit. So to define our time variable, we're going to use um, colons. The way we'll get use it is basically we define starting point, d naught, colon, and then we define a step size, which is going to be our dt. We're going to define a stopping point, which is going to be our d final. If we were to run this, basically we'll see all four of these variables pop into our workspace. Um, and if we were to open d, something I like to do is I'm running codes, just make sure my variables are being defined properly. You'll see that we've got time defined from 0 to 3 in sizes of 0.1. So that's exactly what we want. Um, you'll also notice I'm ending all my statements here with semicolons. Um, that just suppresses the line from spinning into the command window. So, for example, if I were to this off on the code, um, it shows line 18 in the command window, which just makes the code take longer to run. So we'll suppress those. Okay, so next we're going to um, kind of start an initial value for our y. Um, so we're going to say y1 equals 1. Now you'll notice with my indexing, I have to start at 1 and not 0 because MATLAB does not accept indexing starting at 0. So I'll give you an error and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is happy, um, but if I were to do y, say 0. These must either be real positive integers or logicals. That just means you can't have an index value less than 1, and you can't have an index value that's not an integer. So we're going to start at 1. We're also going to start our indexing for our exact solution. I'll show you why in a second. Um, that's also going to be 1. I like to save often and run off and just to make sure everything's working. So everything's into our workspace just as we want. And now we're going to come down here and we're going to use a for loop to solve for y at every t value. And if you remember from our previous video, um, every y step is going to be calculated using the previous y step value um, plus our time step size multiplied by f of t comma y where this function 
is basically the right side of our differential equation. In this case, it's going to be 4y. So the way we're going to code that up, we're going to start with a 4. And we're going to define our index going from 1, the length of our t vector, minus 1. Now, some of you will say, well, wait, couldn't we just do from 1 to 30? I mean, we know the size of our t vector. And yeah, we could do that. But this method of coding means that if we are to change the size of our time step, which we're going to do in a second, this is going to adapt to that. So right now, our for loop is going to go from 1 to 30. But if we were to make our time step bigger or smaller, we'd have to come down and adjust this. Whereas by using this length command, um, it finds the length of our t vector and uses that to define our indexing, which is pretty nice. So we'll start by calculating our exact solution values at every time step. And since we already know our initial value, we're going to be calculating it at every i plus 1. This means that our exact solution is going to have the same length as our time vector and our y vector once we calculate that. And if we'll recall, the exact solution um, to this ordinary differential equation is just um, the exponent of 4t. We're going to code that up exp parentheses 4 times t parentheses i plus 1. So the corresponding time value um, is going to correspond to the index um, of our exact solution. Makes sense. So we'll just run that, make sure that's working. And it is. It looks like we've got a 1 by 31 um, vector of points, um, same size as our time vector. That's what we're looking for. So now we're going to do our numerical solution here. Um, we're also going to be calculating y of i plus 1 based on y of i plus dt times 4 times y of i. So the nice thing about numerical methods is you pretty much plug them into MATLAB in exactly the same way that you would write them down on paper. So y, instead of a subscript, it's just our index, i plus 1. Um, and then it's going to be equal to y of i plus dt times f, which is 4y. We'll run that and make sure that's working as well, which it is. Great. So now we're just going to finally visualize this and see how close we've gotten with our solution. So we're going to make a figure. We're going to turn our hold command on. So if we do two plot commands, they're both going to show up on the same plot. We're going to plot these are x, y as our y. We're going to make these, how about red circles? Great. We're also going to plot time exact solution and let's create a line width of 1.2. This just defines um, how thick the line is on our solution plot. So you can play with this value here to get something that looks good. We're going to make an x label. This is going to be time. Say that in seconds. Say y label. Um, we're just going to call it y of t. So why not? Um, idle. We're going to say um, forward Euler versus exact solution. We're going to create a legend entry where um, you title your two plots um, and the order corresponds to the order in which you plot them. So the first one we're plotting is our numerical method, so we'll call that forward order. And then the second one being the exact solution. Great. And then we're going to turn our hold off and see what this does for us. Okay, so this is what our approximation looks like. You can see that it's not great. So we've got kind of a big time step here. Seems like the solution looks pretty good until about here, and then it diverges rapidly. But we have to keep something in mind. Look at our y scale. So our y scale is way up onto 18 times 10 to the fourth, where our exact solution comes to about 2,000, 
and our approximate solution comes up to about 16, or I guess that's uh, 20,000, and this comes up to 160,000. So something to keep in mind, um, relative error here looks pretty small, but um, absolute error might be quite large based on our scale. Let's see if we can get a better approximation by changing our time step. So we're going to come up here and we're going to um, change this to how about 0 0.01. Run that and see how it looks. <clears throat> All right, much better. So you can already see just changing the time step by a factor of 10 um, gives us a much better approximation over this three second. Still diverges a bit at the end. Um, let's see if we can get any better. So let's just go to the extreme point zero 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 one. If we run this, it's pretty much dead on. So something to keep in mind with the for forward Euler method is the smaller our time step is, the better the approximation. Um, but the longer we run the approximation, um, the more the solution is going to diverge since it's a forward method. It's always basing the approximation on a previous value. Um, Another thing to keep in mind is that the smaller your time step, the larger your um, computational power you need to do the approximation. So that's the trade-off. If this were a really complex simulation and you were running it for a long period of time, you'd be, you'd be somewhat limited by the time step that you can use. But since this is sim simple um, ODE computing, we can pretty much make our time step, step as small as we want, and that will give us better and better approximations. And finally, let's run this for, say, 300 seconds and see how this time step looks. So now you can see it's taking a bit longer to compute. And still looks pretty good. Um, obviously, you get this massive blow up <laughs> um, since it is an exponential. Um, but the approximation is still doing pretty well. So that shows you kind of the power of the forward Euler method um, and the importance of selecting a good time step. So if you didn't know the exact solution, um, obviously you'd want to choose a small time step um, to reduce your error as much as possible. That's it for the forward Euler method. If you have any questions, feel free to leave some in the comments and I will try to respond to them as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.